Well, let's get started. Welcome, folks, to the uh, first meeting of the OKD Working Group uh, General Group. Uh, this is uh, our meeting for January 18th of 2022. And uh, we have an attendees section. So if you're an attendee, please, uh, in the meeting notes, uh, put your name. And if you so choose your affiliation, and uh, we'll put that in the chat again in case anyone has joined since that was posted. Let's do a quick agenda review. Uh, let me know if there's anything that you think we missed, but folks have been adding a lot of stuff as we go. Uh, we'll take about 30 seconds. Uh, to take a look and let me know if there's anything you'd like to add to the agenda or remove uh, for that matter. All right, any suggested changes? If not, then we'll move on. All right, great. Well, let's jump into the first items. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Vadim is not here, but he did put some notes in there. Uh, the new 4.9 stable release is out with no significant changes. Um, the 123 and 122.5 rebases are landing soon, which would unblock uh, the Fedora 35 rebase, and uh, Christian landed the final OKD specific bits in the machine config operator master on 4.10, and there, we are about to be 100% upstream soon. That is awesome. And uh, there's some progress on the OKD assisted installer, um, working on uh, the installer slash AI changes. And uh, are there any questions on that? I don't think uh, Christian is here. Um, as well, so we don't really have anyone from that side of the house here that can answer questions, but if you want, we can put them in the notes. Any questions you'd like to put in the notes uh, for the next meeting to be answered on these things that Vadim provided? Okay, not seeing anything. Let's uh, move on. Next up uh, is Timothy with uh, Fedora Core OS updates. Yes. Hi, everyone, and Happy New Year. Um, so on the Fedora Core side of the house, we working on full chorus layering work. So I've linked there to the, um, this documentation, experimental documentation, and uh, the tracker for, for the work there, which is like the big thing happening right now in Fedora Core OS, which will hopefully enable uh, fully uh, layering based images for OKD. So um, everything we do um, in sync and much easier to think with Fedora with Chorus changes involving less, less rebuilds and uh, in faster turnaround. So that's the, the, the biggest one right now. And apart from that, I don't think we have anything major changing the Fedora Chorus side. Uh, since uh, last time. So that would be it for me. We're still working on bringing Kubernetes testing more in line. And that should uh, help us. Excellent. Any questions for him on the Fedora Core West stuff? All right. Seems pretty straightforward. Uh, up next, uh, Brian, do you want to uh, discuss updates uh, from the uh, dots or something group? Yep, and we'll, we might as well start with that. Um, so we had our first meeting of the year last week for what's the documentation work group. Um, and one of the things that came up is, should we rename the work group? Because the scope has expanded. Um, we're no longer just looking at documentation. We're looking at things like the social media platform. We've looked at um, the community interaction model, how we can actually do that. Um, we're talking about the new Git organization. So there's been a couple of thoughts. Should we be the comms work group or should we be community um, liaison or community um, 
outreach work group um, because we are sort of doing that role. So any feedback on that would be, um, we can have a discussion. A couple of other points that we talked about while I'm, while I'm on. Um, we, we are still looking at moving it into a um, new Git organization for OKD, so out of the open shift, so community members have more access to the community. And with that in mind, we have we did have a discussion around, do we have too many contact points? Because there have been some comments that we've got too many touch points. We've got the Google mailing list, we've got the two Slack channels. Um, we have tried to move everyone to the discussions group within the OKD um, Git repo. And then there are various social media. Um, and from us who are in the community, the comment is there's too many places to, to, to track and to follow what's going on. Um, and it must also be com confusing to new members as, as to where do they ask questions um, and are the people looking at the channel that they've chosen to ask the question and are they getting a response in a timely manner. So I think that's the second issue um, and it would be a good opportunity to sort that out so as we move to the new Git org, we can put everything in place so we don't actually cause confusion. Um, there were no new issues um, and there were no real changes. Um, I did tweak the colors. So we now pass the um, accessibility checks from the Google developer tooling. And um, we had a couple of contrast issues. So that's all been been sorted now. So really th those two discussion items, I don't know whether you want to have a discussion in this group or whether people just want to ping and add to discussions. Um, around the naming and also community out outreach channels. The only thing that I would say is that documentation and getting good documentation for OKD is still a really high priority. And so um, having visibility of a working group working on documentation is pretty key. Um, and that, that communication, I know it's a priority, but it, from from my perspective, it's the getting the documentation up to snuff is still something um, we really need to focus on um, as you know as an entire community, not just the working group folks. But I I wouldn't want to lose visibility of that because I think from my perspective, the thing that I get the most feedback on um, uh, personally is you know the documentation is uh, still needs improvement. So um, I think I, I, sh I shared with Jamie, I didn't share it with a group, but one of uh, my ex-Red Hat colleagues from, from uh, VMware, I don't know if you shared it with the docs meeting, um, Jamie, um, John Holly's um, review of trying to install on VMware oh, or something. Yeah, so I was going to, you know, for me, my, my concern is is getting, getting out of the business of, of focusing on documentation. Um, Whereas that, that's personally the thing that I think we, we need the most work on. Communications is still pretty big. So, um, yeah, and so that's, that's my two cents. Yeah. What about anyone else in terms of uh, the naming part of it? No strong preference on my side, so. All right. Well, the docs group is going to be talking about it next week, and uh, we'll take this feedback or uh, take the feedback that we got and um, work on that uh, and see where we land. And we'll definitely let folks know. Um, any thoughts on the um, narrowing down the scope of our communications? Uh, Right, and actually, so uh, Timothy r r points out that we um, do have reserved OKD project uh, on uh, GitHub and GitLab. Diane, has there been any movement on trying to get OKD, just OKD project, uh, wrestled yeah. from the hands of the random person? No? No, the random person and the random people in um, at GitHub that um, approve that stuff haven't responded at all. So okay. I think we probably just move with the okdproject.org and be happy with that. 
Okay. Um, I think we, we waited long enough. Sure. Uh, so we'll take that to the docs group. Um, another thing to come out of the docs group is that Brian and I are setting up a meeting with Vadim. Actually, I just got done talking to Vadim a little bit ago about this. Um, Brian and I are going to meet with him and talk about the current main OKD repo and like what needs to stay and what needs to go and like reworking that because it's sort of like a long screed right now of differing ideas. So we'll meet with Vadim and, and see from an engineering perspective what he thinks needs to stay sort of at the top level readme in the repo versus uh, other places. Um, the other thing, was there anything else? To, no, I think that's about it. Brian, is there anything else or are we good? We're good. We're good. Oh, we haven't heard from Driti. We got to get those credentials, actually, because yeah. we don't actually have those uh, Twitter credentials I, yet. I reached out to her again last night, um, uh, or her last night, my last my last night, her morning. She's in right. um, India, I, I believe. Um, and so I haven't heard back from her. I will ping her again today and see if I can get those back here. Um, I'm sure it is. She's a Red Hat employee, so she'll respond eventually. Yeah, excellent. Um, uh, let's see. So next up is um, uh, ba, 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 issues. There's there were no new issues submitted to the repo, the main repo, uh, in January yet. Uh, discussions. Note that the discussion section is meant to be like covering the discussions items in there. And if you have like new items, that's where you would put like new items. So like. Sandra, that would your item would actually go under new item since it's a new topic as opposed to something that was submitted to the discussions section, mm -hmm. which is actually sort of a, a, a self-referential uh, yeah. thing. Um, so, well, Sandra, why don't since we're sort of skating into that, uh, there was no discussions uh, in the repo of note. So, Sandra, why don't you go ahead and, and uh, you had a, some thoughts. Yeah, well, Brian already introduced the topic uh, in, in his section. I kind of, maybe it's just my personal opinion, but I, I kind of find difficult to find a single place where to point user to ask question and get answers. From I come from the overt experience, and there we have a mailing list and several social media, but whenever a question arises, we everyone direct to the user mailing list so we have uh, all the question and answer in a single place so uh, i wonder if it makes sense to have a, a, a main contact point uh, where we can direct people asking question and looking for answer before asking instead of having to to search in multiple channel if there is already someone who asked the question or if someone already provided the, the needed answer there I think the thought that came out of the docs group was that we use the discussion section for that because it can be tagged with different items. If it's a work group specific thing, it can be um, tagged with work group. Um, we did verify that we can add tags and labels uh, and whatnot to those discussion items as it currently is in the um, uh, in the okd.io repo. Um, so that the thought was that we would be heading in that direction. Brian, you want to speak a little bit more to that? <clears throat> yeah. Um, so j just a, a very quick recap. So we've got the Google mailing list, which was initially meant to be for the contributors that wanted to discuss sort of technical issues. That started getting taken over by users asking for help. We've got the two Slack channels. One is a developer and one is a user. Again, the working group were meant to look at the developer and the end users that want, support, that want help with things like install. They were meant to use the user channel. We got people asking anything everywhere. Um, we then had issues within the OpenShift OKD Git repo. And again, that was a place where people were asking for help um, when they run into um, difficulty. And recently we started using the new discussion feature of GitHub. And what we've done is we changed the header in the Slack channels and we put messages in the mailing list to say that if you're looking for help or connecting 
with users. Using OKD, the place to start is the discussion. If you're having problems and you're not sure whether it's actually a bug, start with a discussion. If you have identified a bug that is repeatable, raise an issue. So we try to give that advice, mm -hmm. and that is actually in the the community documentation. We did we did document that approach, and we are trying to push people to say, if in doubt, go to the discussion sections of OpenShift slash OKD. You're on mute, Jamie. And one of the things was, okay, do we start shifting to the discussion section on OKD.io um, as opposed to the OKD repo? And the idea was, if, well, if we're going to be using the new repo sometime in the next couple of weeks, it doesn't make sense to, to spread things out across that. So we would ideally, when the new repo is populated, uh, start managing conversations and directing people to the discussions there. One thing, I don't know if folks noticed this or not, but Vadim actually left the dev channel the other day in frustration um, because people have been asking user questions there and there's not really any dev discussion. So one thing we might ask ourselves, and this will be discussed at the, at the uh, documentation subgroup, is are we actually utilizing the dev Slack channel? Does it confuse things? Does it... Is it helpful as we start doing more development, ideally, as things align with upstream, downstream, um, and there's more community contributions, like, will we use that, or do we anticipate that that's just going to be an empty channel from, from now on? Um, do folks have anything they want to chime in on it that we can take back to the documents group? Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. We could easily archive that channel and not miss it. It the uh, like and also the like calling it like OpenShift Dev kind of implies that there'd be actual OpenShift development happening in there, and there isn't. So it makes even less sense to keep it around. If we need to, we can probably make a separate OKD channel. I would think maybe we would we even want that on the Kubernetes Slack. I don't know, but if we do ever get around to doing our own dev work. Is there somewhere a roster of the developers actually working on, on OKD? No. There, there isn't, because there's really Vadim and, and Christian. And, yeah. and Christian occasionally, yeah. Okay. And the Federal Quest folks don't really hang out in the Kubernetes Slack, as far as I know. We have our own uh, IRC matrix channel, and we hang out there, and we don't really follow the OKD questions from this channel. If we were going to have a thing that where developer-ish type stuff were happening, probably it would wind up being, I, I would probably put forth that we'd do um, a matrix room. And then if we wanted to have it like also accessible as a touch point in the Kubernetes Slack, being able to bridge it there. But like the vast majority of the people that in here that are doing stuff like myself, Timothy, um, and others, like we just don't use Slack for that at all. Like I mostly, I mostly look in Matrix, and I barely look at the Kubernetes Slack to begin with, or the OpenShift Common Slack, um, even less so. Like it, it, I mostly am living in Matrix, talking to the other developers in Matrix rooms over there. And it's just the gravitation for the developers is just not in Slack. I, I may be a bit of a curmudgeon, but I don't even know what Matrix is. <laughs> yeah, ne neither do I. So sorry. Um, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's basically it's basically replacing IRC is more or less. Yeah, and it's bridged actually. Um, Fedora actually has a bridge, but there were some issues a couple of weeks ago with slowness in the bridging. I don't know if that's been resolved or not. Seems to be fine room. now. Um, okay. The so the the servers are maintained by um, Element Matrix Services, and we have a support agreement with them. And they are they basically prioritize whenever we say something is wrong, they go and they go whack it with a hammer and go fix it. Diane, what do you got? Um, do, do you have a link to the Fedora uh, Matrix server? Hold on. Let's let Diane Diane had her hand up. So let's I, go, I Diane, then Christian. 
would like to ask a couple of questions. OpenShift dev versus OpenShift user. So if, if I'm hearing you right, and I may not be, you're saying that OpenShift-dev on the Kubernetes channel isn't getting a lot of usage? Like, I haven't looked at the traffic or anything. Like, no usage. It's oh, only, no like, usage. users posting user questions or okay, people cross-posting user questions between and, the two channels. Yeah, that, that I, I hear you. And OpenShift yeah. user is where Vadim would like us to have point people to if we're going to, at the moment, if, unless we set up something else, so that um, OKD users and OpenShift users go there and ask questions. I'm just trying to figure out what Vadim's preference is. Was it just get everybody in users? Um, because was, what, what is Vadim's expectation that OpenShift-dev would be is kind of my question is what should oh, that be? Thought... For people that are actually working on developing OKD that are bug fixing or, or whatever else. Right. And there's very, 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 little like almost zero of oh. that going on yeah. it, it's basically a worthless channel and it's not like the red hatters are using it you know yeah. for no, internal know. open shift development yeah so so if we squeeze so i'm just trying to think of a first pragmatic step we can take if we squeeze those two into one is is that vadim's preference so that he's not getting duplicate questions placed in two different places is that the issue with no, the, the issue is, so I can, him and I actually had a conversation about this when he left, because I, I was like, what are you leaving for? Like, what's going on? And basically he was like, it's useless. People keep repeating questions uh, from the user channel, which is true. And he's thinking that we should just use users, dash users instead. And then like for short-lived personal chats, uh, you know, for particular problems or something like that. Um, he thinks Slack is only good when it comes to community options, really, right? So yeah, so we we do need, uh, in my humble opinion, to maintain a presence in the Kubernetes Slack, um, just for visibility of OKD as one of the many dis, you know distributions of OK, of of Kubernetes um, from a optics perspective. I'm totally cool with combining the two of them um, into one. You know, just call or maybe just call OpenShift. Just have one called OpenShift. Period, um, rather than users and dev, and 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 we can make that request of the Kubernetes folks. Um, I know Commons isn't used very much, but um, if if at some point uh, there there's no real reason to make something up in OpenShift Commons like an OKD channel. There's some OKD rooms there and chats that happen every once in a while, and I get pinged. And I send them over to OpenShift user in the Kubernetes Slack if it's te technical and beyond me. So I think the very first step that we probably should be doing is is rectifying the, the duplication issue that Vadim is frustrated with. Um, I, I don't know ma Matrix. I know Discord, um, and I, not that people want another thing to log into. Um, I certainly don't. Um, but if we wanted to set up some sort of whatever this matrix thing is. Um, matrix 4 is terrible. Don't go watch it. Um, <laughs> it. Just stream it at home and watch it with popcorn that you don't have to pay 10 bucks for. But if this matrix thing is, is better than matrix 4, then, you know, and it's what the community wants, we could probably um, set up a matrix server for ourselves to use. Yeah. So, um, you know, and I'm, I'm happy to, to do you know, something like that, especially if it bridges to everything. I think that that might be a solution for us. But I do think we need that public space in Kubernetes. And even if in the header for the OpenShift combined Kubernetes Slack, we have a pointer to the matrix. That's going to blow my mind here. I think I keep saying that um, to or to Discord. That would that would be, I think, the solution for that to, for main, for watching it. You know, this duplication is is terrible um, for me. Um, I'm all, I'm in like 20 different Slack things, so I'm you know if you wonder why I can't find Dietrich's thread on the username password, that's because I can't find which one she gave it to me in. Um, so I would say the first thing is to go ahead, Christian, is to ask the Kubernetes folks to combine those two Slacks for us or kill one. Uh, I, I would agree with that um, entirely. Uh, I, I don't think we want to lose uh, the Kubernetes Slack uh, 
altogether because just it, th there's an audience there and um, people might find it. And even though it's not very active and I'm certainly not looking there every day, uh, I think it's good to have that presence. Um, Matrix is somewhat of an spiritual successor to IRC, maybe. Uh, it's a federated thing. Uh, Fedora has an instance. We now have a, an internal Red Hat instance in, on the VPN as well. Um, and that is certainly used a lot by uh, the Fedora community. So uh, I'm already on there and I know uh, other people like Neil um, and Timothy are as well. So uh, I think that might also make sense. Obviously it's, it's another, another channel on top of what we already have and if we want to reduce things. Um, but I do think that makes sense as a presence because that's only going to grow in the future, um, the usage of Matrix. So yeah, and having just one channel, it's it's mostly going to be user usage related questions anyways. Um, and if we need space to discuss uh, some development in the future, then it's definitely easier to just create a, a Matrix channel for that. Um, we, we could ask uh, Fedora to host us there. I think um, I think that's a good idea. And uh, you, you can actually join the Fedora hosted Matrix channel with with the Matrix think... account you have anywhere. Um, so yeah. Neil, can you take that as a task to ask them to create? Yeah, one I can for... do that. Okay. I've already had to do that for a couple of other things already, so I might as well. I can I can do it for this too. Okay, thank you. So is the general consensus then dropping dash dev from the, I agree we should stay yeah. on the Kubernetes, Kubernetes Slack and keep dash users and then just drop dash dev. Mm -hmm. Is that yeah. generally Yeah, let's in line keep OpenShift users. And, you know, if we can, have it renamed to just OpenShift. Yeah, that, uh, I think there's, there's a number of existing links out there in the universe and blog posts and everything like that. Um, so if it's renamed, those old links will still work. They will okay. redirect. Okay. Well, let's see if we can do that. I would almost say OpenShift dash OKD. Um, yeah, I, that works too. I, yeah, I, just I was going to say there's no point in saying dash users when there's only one channel. Yeah, I, I also think adding the OKD name is good because a lot of the community, when they say OpenShift, they think of product licensed rather than the community supported. But it, uh, the the only thing that I think it might be, um, I, I agree with totally with that statement, but I also think there are a lot of customers who go to that um, from looking, and so it might be that we just need to get the redirect statement or whatever it is at the top of the, the box description to point to, like if you're looking for OKD conversations, go to the matrix. God, I'm gonna love saying that. Um, and if you're looking for OpenShift, go to the Red Hat OpenShift support line, um, because I think there's, there is occasionally there are OpenShift people, engineers and folks who go there and peek and look, and especially during conferences and events, um, people ha tend to, to hang out there more. So, you yeah. know, but I, I like having OKD visible. So, yeah. we'll and one thing we might want to do is talk to um, Chris Short. So Chris Short has been someone who's been contributing a lot in the Dash users on the Kubernetes Slack um, and see if we can get him to join uh, the new um, Matrix uh, because he's an incredibly helpful person. And uh, and he's, uh, now at, he's now at Amazon. So, um, uh, oh, sorry, I said Chris Short. What I meant was um, uh, um, my brain is uh, not Chris Short. Uh, Andrew, sorry, Andrew uh, is someone who's really helpful uh, in Andrew, the channel. Andrew, Andrew Block? No. Um, Which Andrew Sullivan? Mike, what's his last name, Mike? I forget. Uh, Sullivan? There are a lot of Andrew Andrews. Sullivan. Yeah, yes, Andrew, Andrew Sullivan, Sullivan, yeah. But Andrew Block is also very helpful, too. Yeah, okay. Take care, Christian. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so, so yeah, Andrew Sullivan, it would be good to let him know um, he's really helpful. And um, and actually, Chris Short did leave, I saw, the OpenShift yeah. channels on Kubernetes uh, as he was transitioning. 
I know. So we're sad. Um, but he's still around. And if you go to Kubernetes contributor SIG stuff, he's in that, the, all those channels, very active yeah. still. So he's still and around. And I, I work with him in the open GitOps uh, stuff, actually. He's a participant in that. So, um, so the one ask I have of Neil, I put it in the chat, is um, if you get that room at Fedora's, if you could do a little write-up blurb for us. Sure. Um, how to, you know, how to get a matrix account from Fedora, um, yep. and what the channel name is, and maybe give it to the docs group so we can put it someplace front and center. Yep. Um, Absolutely, be... I can do that. Yeah, huge. Cool. Thank you very much. Okay, the next item is uh, operators, um, community operators and whatnot. Brian, you yeah, want to Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, we, we had this conversation a little bit in the, in the documentation group, but I think it belongs here. Um, it, it's really, is there anything that we can do? Um, I, I know that, Jamie, you're going to talk to the, the Red Hat um, is it offering managers or product managers to see if they can actually create community supported versions and put them somewhere that's accessible? Um, but I'm just thinking, is there anything that we can do or is there anybody would be interested in saying, can we get these operators running? Because I know there's quite a few of us that are looking for some of the Red Hat operators to actually make OKD a development platform, things like serverless, GitOps, pipelines. and Taking the upstream isn't trivial. Um, we we run into security context things. They're not in the operator hub. They, they don't behave the same way as they do on OpenShift. So getting that nice usability, even if, there's, if it's documentation, how do I build my own operator hub catalog with the pipeline in? Or is there something we can actually release as a community? I mean, we say we don't do any development in this group. Maybe we could. Um, even if it's temporary. Um, so just open up the discussion because this has been around for ever since I joined the community. And right. We don't seem to have gotten anywhere. So so we yeah. did get a little play. I, I did have a conversation with Christian Hernandez. So Christian Hernandez is the, the product manager for, uh, I forget what it is, but he's basically for the GitOps operator. Um, apparently it falls under um, Siamek said it far. You see, Mac, right? Right. So that would be the person to get the GitOps operator into the community. It does. Christian says it does install. Christian Hernandez says it does install on OKD, but he's like, "Are you looking to get it into the community um, catalog?" And it's like, "Yeah, that's really ultimately what we're looking for is not just getting it so that it installs, but getting it listed in the." in the community catalog. So there's someone that we can approach. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, don't go mob this person, but you know, it's someone that we can we can send someone forward to go and initiate a conversation on, at least yeah. the GitOps operator. We could, uh, and CMAC at the moment is, um, he's he, he migrated to Toronto and then during COVID migrated back to Sweden, um, just because he they had a baby and anyways, long story. But, um, He's definitely open to having that conversation. And so we could have a side conversation, Jamie and um, maybe Brian and Christian Lombeck, um, or whomever is the appropriate person on the tech side about that um, issue again, if, if he's, and I'd be open to brokering that call easily. Um, it would be nice to have some movement on that. Now, would that be, is he just the point of contact, do you think, for? Getting the GitOps operator or the other operators as well. Do you know? I think CMAC's probably just the GitOps one. Daniel Messier Messer is still the PM for operators and all things operators. Um, and uh, Austin McDonald is the community lead um, for um, the operator framework, which is now a CNCF project, and he's a Red Hatter, and he's keen um, to do whatever we, um, you know, whatever he can to raise visibility. So and get more usage and feedback. So he's another person that we could do. So if we wanted to kick off a, a discussion thread uh, on that, and I, we could maybe just tag a few of them and pull them into a special meeting of the working group on operators, that might be um, a way to move this, move the needle on this a bit more, Brian. 
Yeah, can I comment too? Um, the uh, uh, okay, so uh, so I guess I've been you know running uh, a, a version of OKD with uh, you know students as guinea pigs for um, you know since the uh, I, I guess the the, the late pre-release versions, so like 4.4, .4, I think. Um, and uh, I'm currently running 4.9. And the biggest benefit in that shift is that uh, in the topology view, uh, the positioning of the little bubbles is sticky. OK. Um, and I, I guess in the uh, counterbalancing that is that you can no longer delete pods uh, from the uh, console. Uh, you have to do it from the command line. So the uh, I, I don't see operationally a whole lot of benefit from what we're spending all of our time on. And the things that are being mainly flogged in the sales channels, uh, which is you know all these operators that uh, Brian mentioned, um, We've been talking about it for 20 months, and there's been zero movement. Uh, so, like, I, I think that actually getting, treating those uh, some of the main operators as part of OKD, uh, rather than optional add-ons that you can go and try and build yourself if you can find all the pieces, which is, as Brian was saying, difficult. Um, I, I think that that's actually more important than we have been giving time to. So in a way, I'm just sort of piling on Brian's comment. But uh, it, it's been a long time, and there's yeah. been zero movement. So let's see what we can do. I, th I think this is a point of collaboration with the operator framework group, more so even to get to get um, some more resources on. I mean, this is just my... Well, so some of those operators don't use the operator framework group. Like last mm -hmm. I looked at the uh, um, you know, Tekton pipelines thing, um, it was using an older version. And I, I haven't looked recently. Okay, so they might have changed, but it wasn't using the latest version. And so when I tried to build it with the latest version, it was going to be a lot of work. So it, it seemed, you know, I mean, like the operator framework group is sort of independently moving. And so existing operators aren't necessarily going to convert unless they see a benefit. Now, I mean, it, it would be nice if they all did. Maybe it would make life easier to keep them up to date. And who knows what? OK, I, I would assume so. Certainly a new operator, it would be easier. So I mean, I think there are kind of like two issues here, right? One One issue is like, the work that needs to be done to release what, something that's currently only on the Red Hat OLM and put it into like operatorhub.io so that everyone can. So that's one part of it. But then the second part of it too is like the continued maintenance of keeping the operatorhub.io thing up to date. And I think this is probably where things, you know, where we get into friction with Red Hat internal teams is that, you know, someone, unless there's an engineer inside Red Hat who is excited and motivated to keep those things up to date for the so-called community versions, because we deal with this in the components I work with a lot too. Um, unless someone is really watching out for that, it's very easy for those pieces to like slip away under the mountain of like, you know, Jira cards and Bugzillas we have. And I'm kind of curious if there's a way that, you know, like I would love, what I think would be awesome to see would be like people from the OKD community being able to propose a patch that says, okay, we want this operator in operatorhub.io, and we're willing to maintain whatever artifact we need to put in your repo to keep that up to date. Because I think that's ultimately the best way to solve this. And I have a feeling that it's just a matter of getting in touch with, let's just take the GitOps uh, operator, for example, like getting in touch with that GitOps team, figuring out what they want to see proposed to their repo to make it be able to be pulled into operatorhub.io. And if someone from the community shows up and does that, that's probably like our best pathway to getting these things also in operator hub. So, I mean, that's just my two cents. OK, 
Yeah. Anyone else have any thoughts on this? Well, I, I just wanted to comment, if, if, one, one short one, Jimmy, uh, that in going to, from 47 to 49, uh, 55 operators disappeared. So it's not like we're going forward. So that was, I think, over, it was about half the operators uh, disappeared. Right. Yeah. I, th I think in general, operator hub IO needs more love. Um, so, and, and I put the PM who owns it, I mean, because the focus has been on um, the, the customers and the marketplaces and certified operators and all of that, things that people pay money for. Um, and operator hub.io doesn't get a lot of love. So, m you know, maybe using the GitOps operator to start up a conversation, but also to, to pull in Daniel Messier, who owns operator hub um, under his um, his domain of things that he PMs amongst other things um, might be the, the way to go with Daniel and, and, and pull CMAC in as well to get that and just have one meeting. Um, and so I, I threw his email address in there um, and maybe Jamie and we can kick something off a thread there about how, how do we get this moving. Are, are you going to follow that one up, Jamie? Uh, yeah, I will, um, since I already started also the conversation uh, on the other side with, with the GitOps one. So we'll sort of collect them all together. Or do you want to divvy these up? It's up to you. Well, let's talk offline. We'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. figure out who's going to do what. Uh, okay, let's keep moving because I do want to go through the um, – Vico, uh, you're up uh, next. Uh, yeah, so I know Brian just said we don't do development here, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push back on that notion. Um, our team, and I work on the cloud infrastructure team internally at Red Hat, um, our team has been for a long time had requests and been thinking about how to add machines of the control plane into some sort of machine set of their own. And this would be like a big kind of topology change for OpenShift. But what we've come up with, um, because there are a lot of special needs for those control plane machines, what we've come up with is a proposal to create a new type of custom resource called a control plane set um, that is in some ways akin to a stateful set, but for the machines of a control plane. Um, and, you know, we've created an enhancement to describe what we're doing. And during our team discussions today, you know, we thought it would be cool to reach out to the OKD community as another source of kind of expertise in this area just to see if uh, maybe people would review the enhancement. Um, you know, if anybody had comments, that'd be awesome to see as well. And, um, you know, just to try to help build this bridge between the development of Ocean Shift that's happening and the community that we have growing as well. So really, I just wanted to kind of bring it here for uh, to share the link. And if anybody has questions or wants to discuss stuff, I'm, you know, happy to answer. Anyone? Comments? Questions? All right. Seems like folks are sort of quiet about that. So if you have any further comments or questions, uh, please uh, feel free to reach out uh, to him uh, for more info. And we'll track, uh, you know, the progress of things uh, as time goes on. Um, and uh, uh, have conversations about this moving forward, these types of changes. All right, uh, next up, uh, task list, going through the, the tax task list. Uh, Docs group to create a security. I do have a security um, posting ready to go now that the holidays are over. Um, I can post that. Basically, we want to find someone that can sort of keep an eye on secu security stuff um, and uh, sort of be a liaison for OKD, so keeping track of those things. So I've got a little posting that I'll put out um, as a discussion and um, also in the working group for the people that happen to be in the working group currently that are interest, might be interested. Um, Charo, you had something for uh, download stats. Any update on that? Is Charo I think you have to leave. Oh, you yeah, so Charo had to leave. Okay, we'll check in with him on that. Uh, da, 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 contract, contact Daniel. Is Daniel in the chat? Uh, or in the meeting at all? Seen him uh, since I think the holidays. 
so we'll reach out to him. Um, I think he got everything he needed. Uh, Brian, uh, cleanup of OKD repos and old guides. Um, that's something I've got to do. Um, I'll have to do a pull request. I don't have write permissions within the repo, so someone will also have to um, accept the pull request to actually do that. Um, but also that feeds into a conversation that we're going to do with, with Vadim in terms of what content needs to be moved out of that into elsewhere or vice versa. Right. Uh, da, 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 da. So Diane, research transfer of GitHub OKD repo to the working group, and you said that that's sort of been a, a dead end. Should we yep. take that off the task list, or yeah, you think it's we, something we should just cha change the tax to move the repo from once you've had the conversation with Vadim, move the the salient things into the OKD projects repo, um, or reboot that. So you can. You can say we we tried, we did our best effort to get people to respond to us, but didn't happen. So, but I think the new task is review with the, as you are doing with Vadim what should be in there, and then use the one that we reserved and move it forward ASAP. Uh, and uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Um. Uh, GitHub usernames, Daniel's not here uh, to discuss that. Um, one second, let me update these notes here. Uh, Brian, there was some overt stuff. What, what was that related to? Um, that's his list of names. So these are the people. Oh, so right, I right, right, right. For okay, overt. Yeah. You did VSPA, yeah. Sandro for uh, right, right. and Christian. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and um, uh, Neil did his task already, which is fantastic. Uh, upcoming ad, uh, events, um, uh, let's see here. Sandro, you're still here. Sandro, do you want to comment a little bit on uh, FOSTEM? Yeah, we got accepted uh, presenting the OKD virtualization initiative and showing uh, how to install and use OKD virtualization there. Recording have been done and submitted, so we are ready to go. And um, after after it's done, after you've given the talk, is the talk available online for us to socialize and maybe link into um, the, a blog post or something along that nature? Yes, the video will be made available. Okay, cool. Um, I added a couple of things in there um, as well. Let me just pause them. Um, there, Jamie is very nicely going to be speaking at an OpenShift Commons gathering on GitOps on February 9th. And then we have two things coming up sooner than later, um, next week at um, DevConf TV. And there's a third one um, that I just noticed um, when I searched there on Courier, CNI, and Octavia. I think um, that's one of your cohorts, um, Sandra, Sandro, um, Rohit. Sorry? Is that somebody that, that you know, uh, aware of? I thought he was, um, no, maybe he's, he's an OpenStack person. Um, let me just see. But I hadn't, um, Courier and Octavia to manage OKD services is the thing. It's a plugin that uses, it's an OpenStacky thing, but they're using OKD. Um, clusters to do it. Just an interesting thing. If anybody's interested in Looking OpenStack. That. And, yeah. But those are the things that are coming up. Yeah, just for what it's worth, Octavia is the load balancer service and Courier is the container network. Yep. Presumably that's what they're talking about. Yep. Yep. All right. Any last minute things uh, before we end the meeting? All right, folks, well, let's hope for a successful and uh, uh, safe and happy 2022. Thanks for showing up, and we'll talk to you next time. All right. Talk to you next week. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Bye.